Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chakras and Cuss Words. And today I have a special guest, Miss Jessica, and she is talking about um, how we're going to balance our menstrual cycle to reduce our burnout. And she is a woman's empowerment coach and also is very focused on holistic health and helping women learn more ways to adapt their body to their menstrual cycle, to eating better, to exercise. So I'm very excited to have her on the show. Jessica, welcome. Can you introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about you? Yes, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited. I've been listening to your podcast so much and finally I'm a guest. So Yay! I manifested that girl. I'm so excited about that. Um, and thank you for the introduction. So yes, uh, as you know, my name is Jess. I am a women's holistic health and empowerment coach. Um, and actually before I, let's say, called myself that, I focus mainly on, you know, vegan nutrition and movement or training, I would say. I was more in the fitness world. And you probably know um, that is a very toxic environment to be in if you only focus on one thing. And that's what happened to me um, when I entered the whole fitness world. That's what actually um I would say made my burnout even worse because I would completely work against my body and would completely ignore my menstrual cycle. So when I actually learned about all of this, I wanted to change the way I work with my clients and I wanted to create this holistic aspect to it and really, you know, consider the menstrual cycle as literally one of the most important things that, you know, we women have. Um, and also a gift. Like it's not only, you know, we always see this as a burden. I love my, you know, menstrual cycle. I work with it so well now, but it took me of course some time. So this is basically um, what I do. And I also, of course, help just women feel empowered in their bodies and nurture their bodies in all different ways, right? It's not only nutrition, but it's basically from, you know, the thoughts that you have to the traumas that you've experienced, all of it is you and who you want to become. And we have to uncover that, you know, step by step to really, you know, help you transform and, you know, become that butterfly that you want to become. Because at the end of the day, like, as I already said, I do not um, believe in those, those fitness toxic world, because to me, again, it's, it's toxic. I've been there. I've done all of that and it burned me out and it made me feel like I'm not good enough. So I'm here to change that. I'm here to help women transform in all aspects in life. <laughs> I, I really enjoy that you brought that up because I think as women and especially women who are trying to get on this um, healthier lifestyle, I guess you could say like cycle or, or learn more about their health. Um, so for me, like I was um, there was a point in my life where I, I wouldn't say I was definitely a gym, like a gym rat. Like I was like in the gym constantly. I was like there almost like two hours to an hour and a half every, like every five to six days. And I really got burnt out really quick. And I got, um, and I got, injured and I just got exhausted more emotionally exhausted because I think I was doing so much and then I also kept putting myself at this expectation like well if I don't go I'm going to gain weight back and if I don't eat you know um, extremely clean all the time I'm going to get fat and so I put myself in this really like toxic environment and a lot of it was my own kind of expectations that I put on myself of what being fit and healthily, healthily well balanced looked like when in actuality, it just really burnt me out really <laughs> quick. Do you, yeah. do you see a lot of women getting burnt out when they try to establish a healthy balanced lifestyle? Yes. And I've been there too. That's why I created the program that I have because I had an eating disorder myself. I was at a point in my life where I would work out way too much. I would literally eat a chocolate bar and then feel guilty and step on, you know, the, the bike to burn off all of the calories of the chocolate bar. So I just wouldn't gain weight. Yeah. Um, so I come from a very like, uh, 
you know that word toxic is used too often. So I come from a very, let's say, complicated background, and I didn't realize it for a long time how much I was involved in food and training. And I also had that feeling of feeling guilty whenever I missed a workout and feeling like I wasn't good enough or I will gain weight if I miss two days of not going to the gym. So I've been exactly there um, and I've done it all. And, you know, I just felt the most miserable ever. I felt like I could never hold on to my own standards, what you said as well, right? Mm -hmm. We are our hardest critics. And I was so freaking hard on myself all of the time. And it took me a while to even, to even realize that I had an eating disorder. I didn't even realize it until a point when I was, you know, when I, when I started dating my, my partner right now, um, that's when it got clear to me because, you know, he would actually make comments of like, you constantly say that you don't feel good eating that, or that will make you fat or you look fat and all of these things. And I was like, whoa. That was super unconscious for me. That was a huge realization. And I have a lot of women that actually come to me from a very similar background. Um, and also a lot of women that have done tons and tons of fitness programs in the past and have done those like, you know, those big booty, you know, de <laughs> defined abs, you know what I mean? Like those yeah. people on Instagram that have a million followers because of their huge butts or whatever it is. And I'm not saying, you know, they're wrong. They're right in their own world. And I'm happy for them that they're doing so well. But at the same time, so many people that I know that have signed up to these programs and failed. And a lot of them actually came to me feeling like a complete failure. And I had to convince them like, hey, it can be done otherwise. You don't have to like do those boring workouts every single day for two hours at the gym. You don't have to restrict yourself. Actually, like you can have a chocolate cake every day if you want to and still look and feel great, right? It's about the balance. It's about living in sorry, living in abundance and not the scarcity that we are taught from, you know, and now I'm, I don't even know, I don't even want to know where the new generation is going to be at with TikTok and Instagram and all of that culture that like we constantly see. I mean, again, I've been there too, right? I've, I've lost clients in the past because they wanted to look like this big booty model and not like me. So, and then, you know, they would eventually come back and be like, I was wrong. Sorry. And I was like, told you, girl, I told you, that's not yeah. the life that you want to live because these people live around, that's, the, that's their whole life. That's their identity. Yes. Health is my, my life as well. I love working out. I love moving my body and I love eating good, but I, that's not what, like my life is not controlled by it. I still want to travel and still want to enjoy delicious food as much as I want and still eat a good food on Christmas and not feel like I have to count calories. Right. Um, and so that's the kind of culture that I'm, that I'm trying to really, you know, show people that it's, that it's like possible to, to be done otherwise than to like restrict yourself and feel like you're never good enough. And also one thing that I've seen a lot is a lot of women, um, when they come to me, of course, you know, a lot of them want to lose weight, mm -hmm. but one trait that I, or one one thought, or I wouldn't even say, I don't even know how to describe it. Like one, one thing that they oftentimes say to me is I finally want to be happy when I'm skinnier or when I lose weight because I hate my body. And I'm here to, to teach you that you can love your body no matter how you look right now, because you want to come from the place of self-love. And when you can come from the place of self-love and abundance and you work on yourself from that place, the changes that you're going to experience are going to be so much more beautiful than coming from a place of, oh, I hate myself. I have to go to the gym now because I look fat or whatever. These thoughts, you don't want to cultivate that, right? So that's why like we work a lot also on mindset. Whenever I work with my clients, it's really about mindset first. Before we do anything else, we are like, okay, girl, where you're at, let's change that. Let's reprogram that. And that's literally like the basis to anything that you want to achieve in life. You know, that is why you do this type of work, right? Where it's really about coming from a place of already feeling abundant and cultivating more of that instead of feeling like never having enough, never being good enough because you're going to attract that more too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the mindset of having like a healthy lifestyle and establishing new eating habits and stuff is is one of the, the hardest parts I would say for, you know, somebody who's on that journey is, is having that balance. Like it's okay. If I 
step out of this quote unquote, like meal plan and eat, you know, something. And I'm still okay with that. Um, especially when people are balancing out how, how have you seen with the, the menstrual cycle? Because for a lot of women, I remember like people would say, oh, don't weigh yourself when you're on your period or, or, you know, you always bloat or there's, there's, you know, a huge controversy. Do you work out while you're on your period? Do you not work out when you're on your period? You know, what have you seen? Because the menstrual cycle is something that so many women obviously are going through. Um, and is how do most women feel about their menstrual cycle? I guess is my first question mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. I could talk about the menstrual cycle forever <laughs> because this has literally changed my life. When I learned all of this, you know, I'm like, okay, I need to go into schools and actually tell teachers that they should teach that, you know, children from a young age, because unfortunately, all that we learn about in school is period, and maybe a little bit of ovulation somewhere in the middle. And that's pretty much it. And what we learn is period, okay, you need tampons, you need a pad, whatever. And it's going to suck because it's going to hurt and you're going to bleed and all of that. Okay, that's literally like, whenever I speak, especially to US clients, I feel like European Um, people are a little bit more open or have become more open. But whenever I speak to my US clients, they oftentimes tell me it's a huge taboo. You don't talk about it. Um, My boss doesn't know about it. I never tell my boss about that. And I feel disgusted by it. A lot of like negative connotation with it. And unfortunately, it's still true today, even in 2022 now that we are in. um, it's, It's still a topic that is not discussed as much. And is often seen as a, okay, we don't talk about it. I'm going to hide my tampon. I'm going to hide that I'm even on my period, right? I'm going to stuff myself with like painkillers to like not even show that I'm actually bleeding right now. Um, And what's important to understand here is that at the end of the day, we live in a men's world, or at least we have been living in a men's world for so long, right? So I always like to say, Um, that we have two types of rhythms that we as a human species live by. We have the circadian rhythm, which is our 24 hour clock. And this is the clock that we all live by. That's the sun, right? Like you go to bed at night, your body uh, produces melatonin, and then you wake up in the morning, your body produces cortisol and you're like ready to start the day. And of course, you know that if you mess up your circadian rhythm, you're going to feel sick. You're not going to feel well. If you don't sleep too well, if you only get like three hours of sleep, you're going to feel your appetite is going to be off your, you know, your digestion is going to be up. There's many things. We know that. And we men, women, um, we all have that circadian rhythm, but women have another rhythm, which is called the infrared rhythm. Um, and this rhythm is, you could call it a 28 day clock and, or 28 day cycle. And this rhythm actually is probably just as important as the circadian rhythm, but we completely either way don't know about this or we don't live by this rhythm. And our menstrual cycle, according to the, to the infrared rhythm, we are not only our period once a month, we have four phases that we go through. And these four phases really affect our body a lot. <laughs> but again, never learned about this before never knew about this, never understood why the F am I PMSing? Why do I feel super emotional right now? Why, why do, do I, I cry? Wanna, yeah. Right? It's like, why do why I want to go I, crazy right now? Yeah. yeah. Why am I screaming at my partner? Why do I want to eat so much chocolate right now? Why am I like raging? All of these things. Why is this happening to me? And you think you're crazy. Men say, or oh, she's PMSing. She's probably on her period. All of the stigmas that are thrown around and all of it actually has, you know, a biological reason. And, you know, it's, it's, it's based on the fact that our hormones fluctuate throughout these four phases and they affect us um, in many different ways, right? Our energy changes, our mood changes, our creativity changes, um, our sleep, our sex drive, all of it is affected by our hormones. And um, that's why, you know, we call it the four phases because in each of those phases, you can actually learn how to work with the face, right? You can actually learn how to enhance that face even more. Um, And that's something going back to the burnout, um, you know, topic here, 
that's something that I didn't know back then. And so I thought I should be able to work out just like any man, because again, going back to the fitness world, most of the research has been done on men. Most of the workout plans that you can purchase online or that you can just get for free online, they're built around men because men live by the circadian rhythm. They live, they live the 24 hour clock. And so when they're healthy, when all is good, they can give it all every single day. We women, we cannot. And that's not necessarily bad, but we as women, we then think something's wrong when we cannot keep up with men. Mm-hmm. And that used to be me. So when I first went into this fitness world and I hired a male coach myself and I wanted him to train me and, you know, get this great physique of mine, um, I, of course, he did not know about this. So I would, just like you, you said it as well, I would work out six to seven days a week high intensity every single day, not at all even acknowledging the fact that my energy was low. I remember, I literally vividly remember waking up in the morning, feeling so horribly tired and like no energy at all. Coffee, another like, you know, protein, whatever, booster, whatever you can, you know, imagine. I'm like, no, I can do this. (laughs) Went straight to the gym would, you know, push myself, would be like blurry vision. I wouldn't care because that's what my training plan says. And at some point what you said as well, I injured myself and I was like, okay, something's off here. This is not what's going on. Why do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. And then I found this about the menstrual cycle. And now I have learned how to work with the phases of the cycle that we are not supposed to train um, with, you know, intensively every single day we are not supposed to do it we're supposed to change it up and and live with it instead of live against it um same thing with nutrition same thing with sleep with your energy even with work right i work around my menstrual cycle there are certain things that i do differently around my cycle because i'm more capable of doing something i'm more creative during a certain time right if you want me to go more into the specific phases let me know, but I talked a lot now, so it doesn't make sense what I'm saying. <laughs> so, um, well, I guess the main question would be really when women start to develop, like, because a lot of women aren't aware of this either. You know, we have a lot of expectations on ourselves. Of how can we do this? How can we do more? How can we get everything done? And women are such doers. Like a lot of us are such doers. Like I, I mean, I even know, like just seeing my own relationship, you know, on my days off, you know, and my husband, he has the same days off as me. He's like, I want to relax. Like he'll do like one or two things, but for the most part, he's very like, kind of like relaxing, you know, (laughs) and enjoying the stuff that he likes to do where with me, I'm like, well, we should do this and we should do that. And we should like um, you know, go to the store and buy stuff, you know, so we can prepare this or do that. And he's like, you know, (laughs) relax, slow down, stop it. You know? So I think that so many of us put ourselves on this. I got to do more. I got to do more to kind of justify. And what we're really doing is burning ourselves out. How can women reduce their burnout by, um, really using the menstrual cycle? How, how, how does that happen? Yes. Um, I think in order to answer that question, I will give you a quick overview of the four phases and what happens and how you can use it to your advantage. Now, the first step, of course, is always before you learn about the phases is to understand yourself first. So if you don't track your cycle yet, I would definitely recommend doing it either way with an app or even a better method if you're not on birth control is to um, uh, to work with the FAM method, which is the fertility awareness method. Basically, you track your temperature every single morning. And by doing so, you will be able to see which phase of the cycle you're in when you're ovulating and when you're expecting your period, right? So this is a better way, which I always recommend to my clients as well. I've been doing it. And because of this method, I literally exactly always know where I am in my cycle and how I can work with it the best way, right? So um, so that is always the first step. And if that seems like too much work, 
Um, then track your symptoms, track, you know, how do you feel in the day? How is your energy? Um, journal about it, right? What are your thoughts? Because that's also, you know, your hormone fluctuations will affect your thoughts and how you feel about yourself and all of that. So first do that to get to know yourself better. And from that is a good place to then work with yourself, because if you don't know what you need, you're going to have a hard time, you know, working with you. And then the second step is understanding the cycle. So the first phase is called the follicular phase of the, the menstrual cycle. Um, and that phase basically starts at the end of your period, right? And this is the phase where there's two hormones that are very important to understand that, that are fluctuating in our body, which is the hormone estrogen and progesterone. And these two, you can see like yin and yang. You need to have them in balance in order to feel great, right? So in the follicular phase, the hormone estrogen is the dominating hormone. It slowly starts increasing. You just stop bleeding and you can imagine, you know, your body starting to reawaken. Um, we also like to call it the spring phase. And this is an awesome time because your estrogen is increasing. If your hormones are balanced, you should be feeling higher energy. You should be feeling more creative. So this is an awesome time to spend more time on work, to really start planning, initiating, being more creative, um, brainstorming about new ideas, and really using this extra energy to work as much as you feel like it, right? You will probably feel, some women might even feel restless. They feel like, okay, I could do more. Use that to your advantage, right? Use it during this time and see, you know, what's calling you. Like you will probably feel like, oh, I want to start this project or I want to do that. This is an awesome time to really start something. And again, as I said, be creative. Mm -hmm. Now during the ovulatory phase, this is the phase right after the follicular phase. It starts with ovulation. Of course, it's usually like a three to five day window. Um, and it's a short window. This is when your estrogen is peaking. This is, of course, where you're the most fertile or fertile. I don't know how you say it. <laughs> I feel like you can say it both ways. Um, and this is, of course, when your sex drive is also going to be high, right? So you'll probably experience like, oh, OK, um, I would like to you know, spend more time with my partner. Fun fact, you will actually even be, based on research, be more attractive to others because you're most fertile during this time. So like we have, you know, our order changes. And so, um, you know, pay attention to that, how you feel. And this is an awesome time um, in terms of burnout um, to, for example, do podcasts, interviews, the articulation because of the, the brain changes that are going on, um, your articulation is a lot better. It's also a great time to have important conversations, for example. So if you feel like, I want to talk to my boss about a race or I want to break up with my boyfriend or like whatever is going on. <laughs> you probably feel most confident during this time. You're also probably more confident to go out and spend time with people. Same as in the follicular phase, you'll probably be more outgoing and you feel like, okay, I can do a lot more. I feel like I can put a lot on my plate and I will not feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Pay attention though, because oftentimes what can happen is if you have excess amount of energy and on top of that, you drink a lot of coffee, for example, you might be feeling anxious right so maybe slow down here a little bit with the coffee if you already have a lot of energy and just like pay attention to your natural body cues now where the most um it's called damage happens when women don't know how to work with their bodies is in the luteal phase and that's the phase right after ovulation this is the longest phase in our cycle and this is the phase leading up to our day that we bleed and um, the luteal phase is the phase where we have PMS. And usually I would also like to split the phase into two parts because the beginning of the phase might still feel pretty good. You might still feel like there's energy, that you can do stuff. And this is the phase where your hormone progesterone is the most dominant one. So here, more than anything, more than in, you know, more important than in any other phases, is to really see how you feel. Really track it, write it in your journal, put it on your app, whatever it is, because some women might be experiencing PMS already right after ovulation. Some women experience it a couple of days leading up to menstruation. So you really want to pay attention to that. This is the phase um, that I call autumn as well. You want to go more inward. And this is the phase where most women feel like they're burning out because they're giving so much energy out because they want to keep up with what happened in the first two phases. They're like, oh, I'm great. I'm, you know, want to do all of it. 
but it actually the luteal phase is kind of the opposite of it. You really want to slow down. It's a great time to finish up projects, to finish anything that's going on, admin, administrative tasks, for example, anything that doesn't require a lot of brain power, anything that doesn't require a lot of creativity, um, possibly anything that you don't feel stressed out about to do. So, for example, I like to do my taxes because it's easy. I don't have to really think much and, you know, you just do it. Um, and you possibly want to also reduce the amount of time that you spend with people because, again, your energy is more turned inwards. and especially if you do struggle with PMS, I would suggest really spending more time on yourself. I've had clients in the past that would always tell me, I feel like I'm a complete different person during this time. Why? It's because they try to keep up with being there for their husband, for their kid, for work, for all of it. And then they constantly felt frustrated and they would like, you know, be super, um, you know, I don't know, mean to their, to their kid or to their husband and feel like something is going on. And the moment she stepped back and actually communicated with her husband, like, hey, I need more time for myself. I will, I'm going to take a bath tonight or I'm going to spend, you know, a whole day just with my tarot cards and like med meditating and like just spending time on myself. That's when she finally felt like she found back to herself, that she could actually, again, get that energy back that she was using so much on other people. So that's really an important time to slow down and pay attention to, you know, what's coming up for you. And then the period comes that we all sometimes are like not happy about, right? Because it's just there. Yeah. Um, keep in mind, all of your hormone levels are at its lowest during this time. So you really want to take that time for yourself if you can. I know we have work, we have duties, we have to do things. Mm -hmm. And I completely understand. Now I have the luxury that I have my own business and I can build my time around how I want to. So whenever I have the first day of my bleed, I usually don't do anything. Literally, I don't do anything because I know based on my background, based on the fact that I was burned out already in the past, I would push. I would be like, no matter which phase I'm in, mm -hmm. pushing is, you know, I would do calls, I would do sales calls, all of that on my period day while in pain. Mm -hmm. I don't do none of that. And I don't even have that much pain anymore. I used to have horrible pain. Mm -hmm. I, I worked a lot on my, on my hormonal health. So now the pain is a million times less. Like it's just mm -hmm. a little bit of pain, which is very natural. Um, so I don't even would need to like completely take the day off. So sometimes I just like really work on easy stuff. So if you can either way, taking the day off or really, um, making sure that you have enough breaks. So if you, for example, have to go to the office because it's an important day, you know, try to have a couple of breaks in a day where you can have some deep breaths and you can just maybe close your eyes, meditate for like five minutes. And in the evening, definitely take the time off, right? For yourself, journal. It's, it's a beautiful time to let go of the things that are no longer serving you, right? You're bleeding. It's a beautiful time to like, mm -hmm. you know, look at the stuff that you have achieved in the last month, you know, year, whatever feels right to you. And maybe think of the things that you want to let go. It's kind of a ritual that I always like to do as well. And in this way, also, of course, slowing down with, with, you know, any type of movement. So, um, I personally wouldn't suggest going with like high intensity stuff. I know some women say that they feel better when they work out and that's fine. Um, but in my experience, I've coached many, many clients at this point, every single one of them told me they feel a lot better when they do not move on their period, because they're so, they have been so used to that, that it's normal for them at this point. But when they slow down, their bodies actually have the time to replenish again, right? Because again, your hormone levels are at the lowest. You are supposed to rest. It's winter time. You're not supposed to push too hard. And if you push too hard in the first couple of days of your bleed, you might not experience the positive, you know, flows um, of the cycle throughout the month because your body is still trying to, to catch up. Yeah. Does it make sense? <laughs> I think that was, that was always like one of the, the things that I was, I guess you could say, put under a notion that, oh yes, I still should be like working out and going to the gym while I'm on my menstrual cycle, which I absolutely did not like doing. And then now I'm like, well, why am I doing this to myself if I don't enjoy being there 
what's the point of even working out? You know, if I'm just like, oh, (laughs) you know, what's going on down there, you know? So I decided I don't like working out like at least the first three days of of my period. Yeah. Same. I might go on a walk on the second or third day, depending on how I feel. Yeah. But then all I do, maybe a little bit of yin yoga on the third day, but other than that, like, I completely agree. I'm the same. And, and it's such, it's, it's beautiful because what you just said, like reminds me of how often we are disconnected from our womb space, Mm -hmm. but this is literally our sacred space. This is where, you know, we have our sexual energy, we're a creative force. All of that is created in our womb space. And we should be actually like, we used to be connected to it many, many years ago. And now we are so in our head and we're so disconnected from our body. And mm-hmm. it feels like, you know, our body is constantly sending us signals, but we're like, nope, you know, the world is waiting. I have to do other things than listen to my body right now. Right. So one thing that I also always encourage my clients to do, and just, you know, my podcast listeners and anyone that I, you know, come in touch with, is to try to connect to your womb space, speak to your womb space, place your hands on your womb. And in the beginning, it might feel really, really weird. You're like, hmm, I don't hear anything. She's not telling stuff to me. <laughs> but it's still beautiful to like, at least get an awareness. And since I started doing it, I feel so much so much more connected. And I literally feel when I'm ovulating, I know what's going on. I know when I need to slow down. I know what I need in the day, um, when I need to take a break, all of it, because it's like, you know, it took me some time to connect to that part of myself, but I truly believe it's one of the most beautiful gifts that we have as a woman. And when we learn how to connect with that part of ourselves, you know, we can fight against things like burnout. We can really um, experience the benefits of it when we really use it to our advantage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what changes do women usually see once they start kind of taking their menstrual cycle into, well, obviously when they start tracking it is a big one that, and that's something that I even sometimes forget to do is track it, but it does make a difference because it's almost like you start to get a preparation about, okay, well, this is, this is the area that I'm in, or I'm going to start to, um, have my menstrual cycle soon. I'm going to start bleeding soon. So what, what differences do women usually see once they start getting on this voyage of making their menstrual cycle (laughs) more in sync with their everyday life? Oh, so much like for me and for many of my clients, less period pain, less blood flow as well because heavy blood flow is also a sign that something's off um i literally just had a client tell me this morning like my periods are so much better they're shorter they're not painful anymore um your pms is gonna be a lot better you will not experience this crazy highs and lows anymore um and even if something's off you know where it's coming from you know what to pinpoint it to you know how to help your body you know how to nurture it right with either way the right nutrition or the right self-care, um, you will just create a better awareness, right? You will know what's going on. Um, you will know, you know, what your body needs. What I've seen as well, because when I work with my clients, you you get like a food list of specific foods that support you throughout the phase of the month. Um, and it's so beautiful because at some point when you're so connected to yourself, um, I have clients that told me like, oh my God, I was craving pineapple all of the time. And then I look at my list and I was in that face. It all made sense why I was craving pineapple. And I was like, girl, told you because there's a reason why you crave the nutrients in that face, right? So like the awareness that you get is just so incredibly beautiful. And, and also when, again, when you love to work out, you're going to feel some like, I, I can't even tell, like, in the, as I said, in the past, I would always drag myself to the gym. And today, like, I know when I literally feel like, okay, this is a day where I want to lift weights. Like I really feel it. And some days I'm like, today's a yoga day. Today's a Pilates day. Today is just a walking day. Um, and that's something that I didn't have. I didn't, I never, I never had this awareness. I never knew what I needed. Right. And again, like my, as I was saying, my period pains used to be horrible. I used to sometimes bleed, bleed like eight days, super long and, and have like really a lot of blood flow, which I know wasn't, wasn't healthy at all. And today, like, I'm so happy because for example, I used to also have a tender breast, right? Like it used to be so painful. 
I don't have all of that anymore. Um, I used to have really bad hormonal acne. Um, it was really all over my face, my neck. I mean, you can see, I, I don't have anything anymore. Just sometimes, you know, which is very normal because, you know, traveling and whatever. Um, but yeah, and that's what I, what I see as well of clients, clear skin, right? Clear energy, cl clear mind. Um, and just also better, um, I would say, you know, better, better feeling of self-worth, better, um, confidence, confidence as well, because finally, when you, when you understand yourself, your confidence is going to go up because like, you know, you know what your body needs and how to, what to give your body during this time. Mm. That's so amazing that you have all this knowledge about something that so many women usually are either to, because most I guess most women don't necessarily look to find guidance in this area. You know, they kind of are like, just chop it up as this is, you know, what I have to deal with, but to actually make it something where it works for you and it makes it an easier transition when you are on your menstrual cycle really must bring a lot more balance to just, you know, being happy all around. So that's amazing. And how, how can everybody find you? Yes. Yeah, so I also have my own podcast, which is called the Plentiful Goddess Podcast. And you have been a guest on mine. Yes. So listen to that episode. It was wonderful. I really enjoyed having you on. Uh, so that is the first way. Um, second on Instagram, it's at it's Jessica Carvad. Um, very easy to just, you know, send me a message if you have any questions about that. And third on my website as well, which is jessicacarvad.com, um, where you will see my offerings for my program, my courses, my freebies anything else that you would like to you know know more about it's the menstrual cycle is not the only thing that I talk about I talk a lot of, about other stuff but that's one important part that is part of my offerings and what I really am passionate about um and I can definitely help with if you know anyone has any questions well thank you so much for being on the show and as always, all Jessica's information is going to be in the show notes, in the uh, bio, so you could click and join to get your menstrual cycle on the right track and reduce some of these symptoms. So everybody have an amazing day and bye.